In this video, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing thirds. Let's just recap some of the basics that we've already learned. If we have the root of a multiplied by the root of a, where a is a non-negative quantity, we end up with a. If we have now two different values, a and b, the root of a multiplied by the root of b is the root of a, b. So, let's look at multiplying some thirds. We'll start with a nice straightforward example. Root 2 times by root 3. We can see that this is going to fall into the second example right here. So all we've got then is the root of 2 times by 3, and that's going to give us the root of 6. In the same way, if we were asked to now write the root of 6, it's the root of 2 times by the root of 3. So you can see that working this backwards can often be helpful. So we've got two different values, so it just becomes the root of AB, or the product of the two. Let's say we've got now, let's say we've got 4 root 2 multiplied by 5 root 3. So this time we have a value outside the root in both cases. All we need to do is multiply those two values, so 4 times by 5 is 20, and then multiply the thirds. So we get 2 times by 3 under the third, so we get 20 root 6. So all I've done is the 4 and the 5, and then now the thirds. In general, if we have a root b multiplied by c root d, we end up with a c multiplied by the root of b d. That might look a little daunting and unnecessary, but hopefully you can see what we've just done. So for example, now we might have, let's say we've got 3 root 7 uh, multiplied by, let's go for 6, uh, the root of 2. So we get 3 times by 6, which is 18. These are in their simplest form right here, so we'd end up now multiplying the 2, 7 times by 2 will give me 14. And we can't do anything uh, with those. When these are not in their uh, simplest form, we can look to simplify. I think with this topic, it's very much a case of being flexible and deciding which is the best way around a certain problem. So let's take an example of that. Let's say we got now 3 root 8, and we wanted to multiply this by 2 root 12. So, what could we do? We could multiply the two numbers, so 3 times 2, that's going to give me 6, and then multiply 8 by 12, which is 96. 96 isn't in its simplest form, so we'd look at go ahead, uh, to go ahead and simplify that, which can get a little messy. Instead, what I could have done is rewritten this. 3 lots of 2 root 2, we know that the root of 8 is 2 root 2 from our previous work, multiply by 2 lots of the root of 12, and we see that that is 2 root 3. So let's go ahead and simplify this. We've got now 6 root 2 multiplied by 4 root 3. 6 times 4 is 24. The root of 2 times by the root of 3 is going to give us the root of 6. So that now has made my life slightly simpler. You can try and spot um, certain values in this. Entirely up to you. Um, I personally would just go ahead and write it like so. That said, sometimes we need to be a bit flexible. So I've written that like so, that's one way of doing it. Let's say instead we had, let's go for 3 root 8, and we multiply this now by 5 root 2. I could simplify this, so I could write this as 3 lots of 2 root 2, multiplied by 5 root 2. 6 root 2 times by 5 root 2, or 6 times 5 is 30, root 2 times by root 2 is 2, so we end up now with 60. Alternatively, you could have just seen this now as 3 times by 5, and then what we're going to have, let's just put a root there instead of a bracket, we've got 8 times by 2, which is 16. The root of 16 is not a third, it's an integer value, it's 4, and that will give us 60 as well. So often, being a bit more... Um, sort of flexible and almost quick on your feet will allow you to decide which is the best method to deal with these. But in general, we can say that if we have now a root b multiplied by c root d, it's a times by c, and then multiplied by the root of b times by d. So that's nice and, and straightforward. Okay, let's move on and look at brackets. Sometimes we might be asked to expand and simplify. So let's take now root 2, and then we've got the quantity 3 plus root 2. And we might be asked to expand and simplify. So as before, with anything, we multiply the outside by the inside. 
So let's go ahead. We've got root 2 times by 3, which is 3 root 2. And then we're going to add to that now the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 2. Root A times root A is A, so we get 3 root 2 plus 2. Don't put 3 root 2 plus 4. That seems to be a common error. Um, it's just now the 3 root 2 plus 2. We might be asked to expand double brackets. So let's look at an example. Let's go for 2 plus the root of 3. So 2 plus root 3, and then 5 minus root 2. So if you do FOIL, first outer inner last, or if you do a grid, whichever way, we're going to end up with the following. We're going to have 2 multiplied by the 5, plus now the root 3 multiplied by the 5. We're going to have now plus the 2 times by the root uh, minus root 2, and then we're going to have plus the root 3 multiplied by the minus root 2. So entirely up to you on how you want to expand that out. That's one way of doing it, um, but you might have your own preferred choice. So let's do this. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 5 root 3. Then we've got now minus 2 root 2, and then we're going to have minus root 6. So that's expanded. We can see there are no like certs, and we can't manipulate those to make that look any, any prettier. That is it. That's expanded, and it looks a bit of a mess. So all I've done is expanded it out, multiplying term by term, simplified, and we can't collect any like terms. If we look at a slightly nicer example, let's choose some values that are going to give us something a bit nicer. Uh, let's choose 6. Let's go for 6. Uh, just make that a little smaller. Let's go for 6. So 6 plus root 2. And then we'll multiply this by 2 minus root 2. So if we expand this out, we're going to have 6 times by 2. We're going to have plus, then we'll have now the root 2 multiplied by the minus root 2, so really up to you on how you want to do this. Then we're going to get now the root 2 multiplied by the 2, and then we're going to end up now with the 6 and plus. So as stated, entirely up to you on how you want to expand this. I'm doing it a slightly unconventional way, but as long as we're multiplying all of these, perfectly fine. So what do we get? We get 12. I've got root 2 times by root 2, so that's going to give me 2, so minus 2, plus 2 root 2, minus 6 root 2. So 12 minus 2 is 10. Then we're going to get plus 2 root 2 minus 6 root 2, which is going to be minus 4 root 2. So that now is expanded and simplified. You might be asked to show that can be written in the form. Let's just take a common factor. Uh, 5 minus 2 root 2, or they might ask you to show that can be written as 5 minus the root of 8. Just be aware of different quirks that you might be asked to show in an exam. So all I've done is expanded it out, as stated, you may have your own way, and just collected the like terms after we simplified. Okay, we're now going to look at quite an important result. Let's say I take 2 plus root 3 and multiply this by 2 minus root 3. If we expand this out, we're going to end up with now, and I'll do it very quickly, we're going to have 2 times 2, which is 4. We're going to have plus 2 root 3. We're going to have minus 2 root 3. And then we're going to have minus 3. OK, if we consider now these terms right here, these are going to cancel off. So we end up with 4 minus 3, which gives us 1. This is a difference of squares. When we come on to rationalising the denominator using the difference of squares, or, as they might say, the conjugate, this now gives us a really important result. In general, if we have, and I'll write it here, a plus the root of b multiplied by the conjugate. And when I say the conjugate, it's the same numeric values, just the sign is changed. That term is not always used. This gives us now a squared minus b. And we can see that here. 2 squared minus the root of 3 squared is going to give us now 4 minus 3, which is just 1. And that's called the difference of squares, and we use it when we're rationalising denominators. So if we look at another quick one, let's just say now 5 plus, let's go for root 2, and then we've got 5 minus root 2. This is the difference of squares. So we're going to get now 25 minus 5 root 2, plus 5 root 2, minus 2. And if I wanted to, I could simply write this down as 25 minus 2, which is 23. You must show initially, in exam questions, full workings. This would generally be a 2 to 3 mark question, and you'd need to show the difference of squares. If you just did that, 
you would probably get one mark. It's just a result. So later on in your studies, if you've got a difference of squares, essentially it's this value squared, and then now we've got minus b, the third squared. And when you look, for example, now, if you've got x plus y, and then x minus y, we end up with x squared minus y squared. And we've seen that plenty of times before with the difference of squares. So that's a nice example of something that we're going to go on and look at. We're now going to move on to dividing thirds. Now, dividing thirds kind of falls into two different uh, areas. The more complicated area is rationalizing the denominator. So that's writing a fraction with a rational denominator and then a third in the numerator. What we're going to do in this video is look at using simplification or simplifying thirds to divide. So let's go ahead and just now recap a rule. If we have the root of a over the root of b, we end up now with the rule that we have the root of a over b. So this is something that we can use. So a nice example of this, if we had now the root of 27, and clearly right here, b can't be naught. If we have now the root of 27 over the root of 3, we could write this as the root of 27 over 3. 27 over 3 is 9, the root of 9, root of 9 is 3. Alternatively, if you didn't want to do that, we could express 27, the root of 27, as 3 root 3 over root 3, and we could cancel off to give us 3. It's just a property that you can use. Sometimes it's easier just to do what I've done at the bottom, sometimes less so. So let's look at some division by simplification. So say we got to now 3 root 24, and then we divided this by 6 root 2. So 3 over 6 is going to give me now 1 half, and then I'm going to have a root of 24 over 2. So what we've got then is 1 half the root of 12. We've already seen that the root of 12 can be written as 2 root 3. So if we fully simplify that, 2 root 3, which is going to give us now just root 3. So in that particular case, I simplified by writing this as a single third. Was that quicker? Well, let's look at another way. Let's write this. Now, if I think about root 24, what we've got here, and we'll write this out, is now the root of 2 times by the root of 2 times by the root of 2 times by the root of 3. If we divide this now by 6 and then the root of 2. So what we could do now is we could say that was 2. So 3 times by 2 is going to cancel with the 6. We've got the root 2 and the root 2, so we're left now with root 3. That's one way. I certainly don't think that's more efficient or more effective, especially when you get larger numbers as well. Um, but again, that's, that's entirely up to you. You just need to be a bit flexible and think of different ways that you could simplify these. So let's say, let's look at another one. Let's say we've got 15 uh, the root of 200, and we divided that now by 5 over root 2. So what could we do? Well, 15 over 5 gives me 3, and then we've got now the root of 200 over 2, which is going to give me 3 lots of the root of 100. Root of 100 isn't a third, it's just 10. 3 lots of 10, and that's going to give me 30. So all I've done is simplified it that way. Now, we've already seen that we could write now the root of 200 as the root of 2 multiplied by the root of 100. And this is something that we looked at before. So I could write this now as 15 times by root 2 times by the root of 100 over now 5 times the root of 2. The root of 2s will cancel. This will cancel to give me 3. So I've got now 3 lots of the root of 100, which is going to give me 3 lots of 10, which is going to give me 30. So different ways that you could look at simplifying that. It's certainly not the only way, but it gives you a nice option. We'll finish with one more. Uh, let's have a go at, let's say we've got 3 for root of 28, and then we have now 4 root 18. Now you could go ahead and look at different ways of doing this. And I think as we come on to rationalising the denominator, if you've got that skill as well, sometimes this is, is slightly easier to do. So let's look at this now. What we've got is 3 quarters for root of 28 over 18. So we've got 3 quarters. And then we could divide top and bottom by 2. So what's that going to give me? 14 over 9. 
So I could write this as 3 over 4. Then I could write this as the root of 14 over 3. The square root of 9 is 3. Remember, the root of a over b, let's just extend that, is the root of a over the root of b. They're going to cancel off. So we've got now 1 quarter the root of 14. And that's simplifying. Can't do anything with that root 14 as that in its simplest form. It's just 2 times 7. Two prime numbers there. So that's, or two different prime numbers, I should say. That's one way of doing that. Um, there is an alternative to that. Uh, I'm just looking ahead and thinking that if we have the skills that we're going to learn in the next video, it would be an option. But right now we can see how that is going to be um, a good a good place for us to start. So that's looking at multiplying and dividing thirds using the rules that we've learned already. In the next video, we're going to look at rationalising the denominator. That's where we've got a third in the denominator and we need to write it with a rational denominator.